If you like growing your own edible mushrooms at home, in this video I'm going to show you how to multiply the mycelium of edible mushrooms. Whether you bought the seeds or you're doing it as I showed you in a previous video, where I showed you the step-by-step -step process for extracting the mycelium from the mushrooms we buy at the market. I usually do this first stage of growing edible mushrooms in glass jars because they're easy to clean and reuse, and they also allow us to sterilize all the seeds before inoculating. Now we're going to perforate the lids. I recommend that it be approximately 1 cm because while we're growing all this mycelium inside the jar, we're going to need a slight exchange of gases so that it can grow properly. I recommend that you cover this perforation with cotton or some synthetic fiber. We're going to try to make a small ball that is compact and we're going to pass it through this perforation that we made in the lid. It is very important that this cotton is very firm and does not come out so that only gas exchange occurs and no contaminants such as spores from other fungi can enter. If there is too much excess on the outside, we cut it off. This is mainly to make it look neater when it is time to grow it. In this particular case, I am going to do this multiplication of the mycelium in corn kernels. We can also do it, for example, in brown rice. And here it is important to wash all the seeds well, not only to remove excess dirt, dust or soil that they may have. But also this first wash will help us remove any remains of any type of spores that may be between all the seeds, to start cleaning them. And once we see that the water comes out very clear, we are going to put them in a pot, cover them with water and put them on the stove. When we see that the water is starting to boil, we are going to lower the heat a little and let it sit for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. We drain the water and let it sit for approximately 12 to 24 hours at room temperature. This is mainly to prevent any remaining resistant spores from germinating and then, when we do the second sterilization, we will be able to eliminate them. We spray all the materials we are going to use with 70% alcohol, from the spoon, the funnel, which in this case is a plastic bottle cutout, and also the pot where we left all the corn to sit at room temperature. After this time, we are going to start packing the corn into jars. Here I recommend that you wash them well and add a little alcohol to achieve better sterilization. It is important that we fill these jars approximately three quarters full to leave an air chamber at the top. We cover them well because now comes the second sterilization that we are going to do to all this corn that we have here and at the same time to avoid any contaminants that may have remained inside the jar. Because if we sow in these conditions it is very likely that we will have some contamination and we do not want that. In a pot we are going to put a cloth on the bottom that is quite thick so that the jars do not receive too much heat. But more than anything so that they do not break when the water is boiling. And we are going to try to fill with water until half the height of the jar so that the heat reaches all the corn seeds more evenly. If we see that the jars hit each other because there is a lot of space, we can put some pieces of cardboard to prevent them from hitting each other when the water is boiling. We cover them and put them directly on the stove. When we see that the water begins to boil, we lower the heat and let it cook for 40 to 60 minutes. After this time, we take the jars out and let them come to room temperature before starting to inoculate. Now we're going to find a part of the kitchen that we can sterilize. In this case, I'm going to use 70% alcohol. And we're not only going to spray the entire counter well, but also all the materials that we're going to use. But it's also important that we spray the jar with alcohol where we have the mycelium that we had when we were sowing, for example, on wheat straw. Because it's very likely that there are contaminants on the outside of this jar. And when we work this way, where we're going to do something to try to keep the environment more sterile. I'm going to recommend that you have a lighter so that there's a small area where we have greater sterility. And if you don't have a lighter, you can do this on the stove. First of all, and it's important, 
Whether you bought mushroom seeds to start a new crop at home or you did this method that I taught you to extract mycelium from mushrooms that you buy at the market, when you're going to inoculate the substrate to start a new mushroom crop, always try to keep some seeds at the bottom of the container so that you can multiply them. In this case, I have this jar where I left some of these seeds and since mycelium grows a lot, it's normal for all the seeds, in this case corn, to stick together. And here we can use a spoon to separate them before planting. And now comes the best part, where we're going to start putting this mycelium on all these corn seeds that we have completely sterilized. And here I'm going to recommend that you put approximately one tablespoon of these seeds with mycelium for each jar. Because that will be more than enough for the fungus to invade all these new seeds. Keep in mind that I'm showing you this process in front of the camera so that you can see it clearly. But it's always advisable to do it right next to the flame to avoid possible contamination. And as we add these seeds that are invaded by the mycelium, I'm going to recommend that you move them a little with a well-sterilized spoon so that they are among the new corn seeds that we are adding. And this will help to enhance all this initial growth much more to carry out this multiplication. Once we finish doing all this inoculation, we are going to leave all these jars in a drawer that you have at home. The important thing here is that you can take them to an environment that is mainly dark. Because during this entire first phase of cultivation, the mycelium develops better when we have low light levels and a higher concentration of carbon dioxide than oxygen. But don't worry about this because with this stopper that we made, we are going to achieve a slight exchange of gases. We can also keep this darkness by leaving the entire drawer inside a black nylon bag. And if not, we can also cover it with a black cloth. On the other hand, we are going to leave it in a place with a temperature of approximately 20 to 25, which is the ideal temperature for a much faster invasion. Over time, what we have to see is that around each of the seeds that we inoculate, we are going to start to see that the mycelium begins to reproduce and over time, the jars are all going to turn white. This is the best sign that we have a completely pure mycelium. And, in general, since we are going to make several jars in this multiplication process, what I am going to recommend is that you separate the ones that you are going to use to inoculate in some substrate, such as wheat straw, cardboard with coffee, whatever you use at home, and the rest to stop the growth and to be able to use it much later, we are going to leave them directly in the refrigerator. Keep in mind that this way we will be able to keep them for two to three months, even a little longer. And the great advantage of this is that we will have much more mushrooms so that we will not have to buy or take out any mushrooms that we bought at the market, so that we can have a constant crop of our edible mushrooms directly at home. I send you a big greeting.